Growing up, my dad had this saying, God will work it out. Whenever we were faced with a situation that we didn't know what the outcome would be, dad's response was, son, God will work it out. I remember overhearing a conversation between him and my mother. They were talking about bills and payments due and the discussion was getting a little intense. And finally, my mother asked, what are we going to do? Dad's response was, God will work it out. Now, I can understand how such a response could get a bit infuriating to some people. But here's the thing. Looking back, everything always worked out. It may not have been to our schedule. It may not have been exactly how we envisioned the answer to be. But it certainly all worked out for our good. So one day I asked my father, why do you always say God will work it out? What does that mean? Sometimes a plan of action is needed. A detailed roadmap can go a long way to inspire confidence. But you choose to always end by saying God will work it out. Here's what he said. Psalms 37 verse 5 says, Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. You can have as many plans as you like, but in the end, it's God who can make it all come to pass. You can come across Goliath. You can fall into a den filled with lions. But when you commit your way to the Lord and you trust in him, then God will work it out. God will deliver you. And so, saints, I want to encourage you and tell you that God will work it out. Whatever your situation is, whatever it looks like, God will work it out. Commit your ways to the Lord and trust in Him. He will work it out. Trusting in God requires us to go against everything we've been conditioned to do. Trusting in the Lord requires you to ignore what you can see or understand. Trusting in Him means that at times you take the doctor's advice, but accept that He doesn't have the final say. I would even go as far as saying, trusting in God means ignoring what the news anchor is saying or what the economy is doing. That's trusting in the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul. So here's what I encourage you to do. Don't put your trust in your abilities. Don't place your trust in money. Don't lean upon your own strengths, but rather trust in Jesus. So let me ask you a few questions concerning God's word in your life. Are you using God's word as a lamp to your feet? Are you obeying God's word and putting it into practice? I do not believe that anyone can be a doer of God's word without being challenged by it. God's word has to challenge you. And it will challenge you when you really try and put it into action. When Jesus was a young boy here on this earth, there's an occasion where his parents found him in the temple, sitting among teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And the Bible tells us that all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and at the answers that he gave. Such was his knowledge. Such was his intelligence and understanding about the things of God. That Jesus, as a boy, was able to rub shoulders with those who had been teaching longer than he was alive. Now, I want you to pay attention to what Luke 2 Verses 48 through 49 say, So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. And he said to them, Why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? That last line is powerful. I must be about my father's business. Even as a young boy, he was on a mission. He knew he was on an assignment. 
He knew that he had an objective, a purpose for him being on earth, and he wasted no time. And so you and I, as modern day Christians, can we say that we are about our Father's business? Can you say that about yourself? Are you about your Father's business? Do you have Mark 16, verse 15, as your objective? As the Bible reads, And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's your Father's business. Let me ask you if Acts 10, verse 42, is your mission. As the Bible reads, And he commanded us to preach to the people, and to testify that it is he who was ordained by God to be judge of the living and the dead. Saints of God, regardless of who you are or what you do, I want to tell you, child of God, be about your father's business. Be about God's business. We are called to seek first the kingdom of God. That means we seek first our Father's business. And God's business, it requires us to hunger and thirst for righteousness. Our Father's business requires us to be peacemakers. Because Matthew 5 verse 9 says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. God's business requires you to be pure in heart. We must be about our Father's business. And one thing you must be mindful of is that the enemy will always seek to distract you. He will always look to derail you from your true purpose. Listen, the enemy would rather have you chasing here, there, and everywhere as long as it has nothing to do with God's business. So here's what we must do As children of God, we need to remind ourselves, I must be about my father's business. And ultimately, we have to ask ourselves, how am I living? What am I living for? Who's on the throne of my heart? Saints, be about your father's business.